so bone and diabetes is indeed a uh, less known area over a period of time but in last few years a uh, lot of publications has been uh, generated or the literature is generated on this field so the next 15 or 18 minutes what i have to speak is that bone diabetes bone disease in diabetes to treat or not to treat so i am not going to discuss much about the pathogenesis but mainly i'll uh, uh, target that when to treat how to treat and uh, what are the treatment options are available and all these things so we all know that uh, hyperglycemia affects the every organ system of the body whether it is a microvascular complications or macrovascular complications similarly the skeleton is also affected by the hyperglycemia and it is interesting to note that approximately 10% of cardiac output is going to the bone and skeleton actually and bone can be considered as a microvascular organ because the definition for the microvascular organ is that depends on the what is the vessel size so if the vessel size is around 5 micrometer then we label it as a microvasculature and bone also as a microvasculature so may not be right now we are just talking the triopathy that is uh, retinopathy nephropathy neuropathy but maybe after some time we talk the tetrapathy that is the osteopathy and the bone effect of hyperglycemia on the bone so here is nice meta analysis by dr viral shah et al and what they have shown is that type 1 diabetes and any fracture risk so here you can see clearly that from this meta analysis that type 1 diabetes patients are at increased fracture risk that is in the tune of around 3 to 4 times of the compared to the non diabetic individuals the similar the story for the hip fracture even more worse so in type 1 diabetes hip fracture is even 6 to 7 times higher than the non diabetic individuals but unfortunately the data from india is not there on type 1 diabetes and hip fracture because our mean survival of uh, type 1 diabetes is not very good maybe 35 to 40 years as compared to the western population they have a lot of type 1 diabetes patients and surviving for a long now coming to type 2 diabetes and hip fracture the risk is again increased almost two times as compared to the non diabetic individuals from this meta analysis now looking at the we have seen at the hip fracture uh, in type 1 and type 2 diabetes but the spine fracture nevertheless also increased in type 1 diabetes almost two and half times higher and in type 2 diabetes almost uh, 1.3 times higher as compared to the non diabetic individuals so what i tried to show you in these previous slides is that patients with diabetes are at increased risk for the fracture whether it is spine whether it is a hip or any other side it is more problematic in the type 1 diabetes as compared to the type 2 diabetes uh recently one of our group publication that was published in jcm and we try to understand that mechanical material and compositional determinants of human trabecular bone quality in type 2 diabetes i am not going to go into detail of this uh, manuscript but it is very interesting i request the audience they can go through if they find time and in this what we have shown is that type 2 diabetes individuals the trabecular bone from the bone biopsy we have shown that mineral to matrix ratio is much better in non diabetic age and gender match individuals as compared to the diabetic similarly this study also study the nano indentation finite element analysis all these are actually deteriorated in type 2 diabetes individuals that is probably predisposes for the fracture because of alteration in the not only the bone quantity but also in the bone quality so diabetes in fracture outcome is bad and there is a multiple reasons are there and these are like uh, fracture outcome is poor in patients with diabetes there is a delayed healing more frequent infections longer hospital stay and the post operative period is associated with more cd events as compared to non diabetic individuals our group uh, did one small study that is a community study in which 4000 patients were studied by the door to door survey and asked for the hip fracture 
and the total 102 patients found to hip fracture out of study nearly 4000 patients and non diabetics are 87% diabetics are 12 to 13% and which is actually matching with the prevalence of diabetes in chandigarh when we looked at the hip fracture in these group of patients we found that non diabetic individuals have hip fracture in 2.3% while diabetes individuals are fracture in 5.5% so though it is a very small study 4000 individuals but is a real world data kind of situation because that is a door to door survey and hip fracture cannot be overestimated or underestimated because the patient having a fracture he knows it very well so this study again show that at least two and half two times there is an increase fracture or two and half time increase fracture risk in diabetes as compared to the non diabetic uh one of the our uh, old study that we tried to uh, study the predictors and outcome of fragile tip fracture uh, from the uh, tri city of the in and around chandigarh total 264 patients with hip fragility fracture were recruited in this study out of these 264 nearly 70% patients are ever having the diabetes so that is contributing 25% of total fractures when we looked at the bone mineral density or bmd we found that non diabetic individuals have better bmd at hip as well as spine though at the hip it is not this to the statistical significance but at spine it is the statistical significance though the western literature is saying that bmd is better in the uh, bmd is better at the uh, in type 2 diabetes but our study is negated that in our study we would not find we did not find higher bmd in uh, diabetic individuals and when we studied these all of these patients were done and we found that diabetes was an independent predictor of mortality in this cohort so uh, risk factors for the fractures are like uh, clinical risk factors low bone mineral density recurrent falls these are the common in diabetes and diabetes specific risk factors are duration of diabetes more than 5 years and two medications one is thiazolidinedione and the second is sglt2 inhibitors are known to cause increased fracture risk in these diabetes of course associated micro and macro vascular complications are also responsible for increased fractures in the diabetes in the us there are certain data those are specific for the type 1 diabetes like celiac disease low peak bone mass and another common is type 2 diabetes vitamin d deficiency we know that management of diabetes requires long duration and lot of drugs there are oral anti diabetic agents as well as injectables and uh, it is well studied in various uh, uh, various publications that metformin actually possibly increases the bmd and possibly reduces the risk of fracture but thiazolidine ions definitely reduces the bone mineral density and increases risk of fracture uh data on sglt2 inhibitors are not much available in some of the uh, like enagliflozin and some uh, sglt2 inhibitors is shown that that increases the fracture risk because of the multiple mechanisms so coming to the perspective of the indian diabetic individuals so we know the indian diabetes peaks are uh, onset of diabetes in among indians is at younger age more central obesity higher insulin resistance and higher inflammatory markers because of the obesity higher insulin resistance high inflammatory markers there is more bone damage is there and younger age of onset probably adversely affecting the peak bone mass so both adversely affected peak bone mass and more bone damage because of inflammatory markers leads to the more severe diabetic bone disease in patients of indian patients with type 2 diabetes as compared to the western population now question comes is treat or not to treat i think uh, by going by the previous literature the epidemiology the fracture risk the pathogenesis indian phenotype there is no question that we should not treat we should definitely treat in patient with diabetes for the bone health so people with diabetes at high risk of fragility fracture people with diabetes and fragility of poor prognosis and that's why we need the treatment in patients of the type 2 diabetes for the osteoporosis or the bone health now question comes when to treat 
So any person who is in hip or vertebral fragility fracture, there is an indication for the treatment. Or the T score less than minus 2.5 lumbar spine or femoral neck, there is indication for the treatment. Or the flex based 10 year probability of fracture is meeting the flex criteria, then also there's an indication for the treatment. So bone density in type 1 in diabetes, in type 1 diabetes, BMD is usually low. While in case of type 2 diabetes, Western literature says the BMD is high, though in our multiple studies we found that BMD is low in Indian type 2 diabetes individuals. And in type 1 diabetes, BMD is rarely reported as normal, while in case of type 2 diabetes, BMD is variable in various studies. Here, uh, the interesting slide uh, publication that was published in JAMA and that they are showing is what is the difference of BMD in type 2 diabetes and fracture risk. So on the left side, this, this slide is showing femoral neck T score on the x-axis and 10-year hip fragility risk in the y-axis for the women. So you can see at the T score of minus 2, there is a fragility a 10 year hip fragility uh, risk is around 10 percent in the women and when these individuals are it is a non-diabetic individuals actually that continuous line for the non-diabetic individuals while the dotted line for the diabetic individuals in the women so you can see the same bmd the 10 year hip fragility uh, hip fracture risk is higher in the type 2 diabetes individuals and the similar is also seen in the right side with the um, men with the type 2 diabetes. So a T-score of minus 2 should be interpreted as T-score of minus 2.5 in patients with the type 2 diabetes and they can be, uh, there can be an indication of treatment when the BMD T-score is the minus 2. Rex in type 1 diabetes, uh, it is already calculator is available and the type 1 diabetes is considered a cause for secondary osteoporosis. And we know that there are various component of tracks are there. And you calculate the major osteoporotic fracture and hip fracture risk. So if it is we considered secondary osteoporosis without selecting the BMD, this is the basically uh, this is the um, this is the risk for the osteoporosis. Uh, 10 year fragility fracture risk is there. Okay. When we add to the T score, say suppose T score is minus 2.8, and then there is all of a sudden a change in the risk of major osteoporotic fracture to 2.8, and hip fracture is minus 1.8. So it is uh, while if you add both secondary osteoporosis is yes, as well as T score. So that does not make any change. So probably the BMD is important in type and type 1 diabetes individuals to assess the fracture risk. And this uh, very interesting publication by Dr. Viral Shah and group, and they've shown that the clinical use of tracks without BMD is useful tool in identifying adults with type 1 diabetes higher risk. But maybe uh, bone mineral, if you add the BMD data, that is the better. Tracks in type 2 diabetes, while you're assessing, you need three things. One is you increase, either you increase age by 10 years. Second, you add a rheumatoid arthritis that is considered equivalent to type 2 diabetes. And third, you reduce T-score by minus 0.5. So you can calculate the correct risk for the type 2 diabetes individuals. Now coming to the interesting flow chart by Serge Ferrari and the group, and they say that the patient with type 2 diabetes present to you, and the history of hip or vertebral fracture is there. In that case, they need the treatment for the osteoporosis. If other fracture is vertebral fracture, if the osteoporosis, if fracture, vertebral fracture is there, then they need the osteoporosis therapy. Second, if they on the DEXA T score is minus two, then again they require the therapy. On if there is no morphometric vertebral fracture and the T score is not minus two, then you can calculate the flex. And if uh, country adjusted flex risk is uh, uh, suggesting that patient needs the treatment, then you start the treatment for the osteoporosis. But if there is no fracture, no other clinical risk factors are there, in that case, you can follow these patients two to three years with the bone mineral density. Now, question comes how to treat. So, general measures we all know that calcium, vitamin D, smoking should be avoided, achieve good glycemic control, 
how it dries only wind iron and these new closings. And now question comes is anti-resorptive versus anabolics. And among anti-resorptives, bisphosphonates versus denosumab. So unfortunately, the data in type 2 diabetes or in type 1 diabetes, there is no clear-cut studies are there. But most of this data literature is available on the basis of post-hoc analysis from the various studies. There is no head-to-head -head trial on anti osteoporotic medication in the setting of type 2 diabetes. So available data says that in patients of type 1 diabetes, that treatment is information is not much available. But in type 2 diabetes, you can see that drugs, those are effective in uh, otherwise osteoporosis also effective in type 2 diabetes also. And in the disposement type 2 diabetes, two studies, FIT and the Horizon, Horizon study, they have shown that if you treat the type 2 diabetes with bisphosphonate, their outcome is better, whether it is a non-vertebral fracture or a vertebral fracture. Similarly, the study of Dinusume was extrapolated or sub-analysis from Freedom trial was done, and they have shown the vertebral fracture was lower with the Dinusume compared to the placebo. And Dinusume is another added advantage that reduced the fasting plasma glucose also. Teriparatide in recent study that is called DANCE study, and they have shown that teriparatide treatment for 24 months showed a similar reduction in the incidence of vertebral fracture, back pain, and a similar increase in the BMD in the participants with or without diabetes. Abeloparatide in the active study in post hoc analysis also shown that there is improvement in the BMD, trabecular bone score as compared to the placebo and active population. So apparently, all anti-osteoporotic therapies seems to be as good in patients with type 2 diabetes as in the non-diabetic population. So I'll end my presentation by saying that diabetes is a state of increased fragility, much more in type 1 diabetes as compared to type 2 diabetes. And because of obvious reasons, if the fracture takes place in type 1 or type 2 diabetes, outcome is poor, poor prognosis is poor. And bone disease must be treated in patients with the type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes. And FREX score need to be registered in patients with type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetes that I suggested. And current study is saying that both anti-resorptive as well as anabolic therapies are equally effective as in the non-diabetic. Till we have the more studies on the randomized control trial in individuals with type 2 diabetes or in type 2 diabetes. And I must request our all senior colleagues, friends, and India should take a lead in to plan a study, multi-centric study, to assess the type 2 diabetes individuals and various treatment protocols. So thank you very much, Dr. Shadish and the Bengal Diabetes Foundation for this opportunity to talk on a very, very important topic, which is usually neglected. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to take any question and answer is there. Oh, thank you, Sanjay, sir, for such a nice deliberation. Please be